Hello, my friends. Today I am very excited to explain to you why it is impossible to know that you're doing it right exactly. Why there's not one universal answer to the question, am I doing this right? There are a set, there are a few habits that I'm going to highlight here as well of ways that you can know that you're doing it right for you so that I'm giving you some positive actionable information as well. And I'm bringing in a uh, throwback to my first YouTube video ever, like five and a half years ago, a Venn diagram, because I love Venn diagrams the way other people love teddy bears. And this one is fancier. It has four circles instead of two, which means when you look at this, it's going to feel confusing and overwhelming at first. So that's where we're going to start at the bottom of the page here. So here, this, and part of the reason I want to do this is just to explain to you, this isn't even all of the elements of what I look at in someone when I get on a call with them as to what's the next helpful step versus right step. The next helpful step for them is just to, just to see how complicated that looks. So the bit on the bottom here is, is the, the, the three actual things we'll go through. But the four elements, the four different circles on here are neuroplastic principles. So that's like your basics of brain rewiring, nervous system science, polyvagal theory, somatics, like all the just the basic principles and practices, that sort of thing. Um, and, and within that kind of adjacent to it is the core beliefs that you have that are influencing the application of those. That goes a really long way. So one of them is just the basic principles of neuroscience that we're applying to this person. Now, on one side, you also have lifestyle, right? Brain rewiring looks different for someone who is... Um, you know, like a, a mother of young children or maybe is actively having babies and like that's a load on her system or someone who works a really intense job or someone who's um, has a really supportive marriage or supportive parents or a good community of friends versus someone who's very isolated versus someone who's in a toxic relationship or, or marriage um, where there's legal issues at play or they're in a divorce. And it's, you know, there's so many different types of circumstances of every kind that can influence our process and how our brains respond to uh, neuroplasticity, both positive and negative, challenging or supportive. And then adjacent to that, the, ne the next bubble, the next circle is how your brain and nervous system uniquely respond to neuroplastic tools, because that's every single person is unique. This is the nature versus nurture part. Like this is the nature part. Everyone's brain is just going to respond uniquely to neuroplasticity. And there's a level of that to which it's like, just, everybody's just different. Um, the last one on here, the last circle, is where your brain and nervous system are in the present moment, in this moment right now. It changes moment to moment, day to day, for just you. And there's there's other little bits in here, so to kind of, I feel like I'm trying to teach, but I don't have, my mom was a teacher, so I'm like, here guys, I'm going to read upside down, except I can't do that on a camera. So some other things that are, are influencers here are your unique history of life experiences. So that, that includes things that are meaningful to you, that shapes your belief system, your traumas and how they impacted you, um, your access to personal agency, which can be changed by how much, if you have a fond response or if you're in a situation where you know, you, you have to work a certain amount to make enough money or you're legally tied to someone who's not good for you or something like that. Um, subconscious beliefs. And this one's really big, the capacity to understand the science in the moment, that one I have right adjacent to here, because where your brain and nervous system are at in the moment is very impactful in how much you can make sense of any of this science. So that's, and, and none of that's supposed to really land completely or make sense. The idea, or the, my intention or goal here is just to help you guys to see that this is a complex picture. And, when I, and this is why so often when I answer questions here, I'm like, I can't answer that question on a YouTube channel. I need to have a conversation with you. And even why I've talked about how with clients, I can't really make progress, like big progress. Well, I, sometimes I can, but it's easier to make big progress with you if I've talked to you like six times and I've gotten the chance to go over, you know, some of the, the characteristics of your practice and how your brain has responded and what's happened during recovery and a little bit of your history and your living situation and all of that, like get a sense for where you're at right now. Um, that's, that's huge, but that's why, because there's all these things here. So, and I, again, I, I intend this more to, to show you that there's, there's grounded hope. That's one of my, my deepest message here is that the hope we have for full recovery using neuroplasticity is not just this, you know, trust until a miracle happens. Like, yes, that's a necessary part of it, but there's a lot of very grounded, part of my bangs, there's a lot of very grounded science 
that we that there, there's a reason there's there's real factors we can look at if things aren't working for you or working the way you expect there are very real factors you can fact check there are different approaches you can take there is a picture we can bring light to and see and understand and that's what i'm passionate about in this work and why i tend to operate outside of just people where doing one program works for them because they usually don't need the level of nuance that i have which is great. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, I only have room for like, you know, 15 people a week anyway. So um, that's great. But that's, that's what I want to give you is a grounded hope that's backed up by lots of information and science and things that are tried and true. So to top this off at the end here, three things you can do that you can know you're doing enough. You're know, you can know you're doing it right for yourself. One is trial and error. Apply trial and error. Apply, And they, they all kind of tie in. Apply what you know earnestly. That's number two. And trial and error it, you know, see how it goes. And that means give it three to seven days and take notes and isolate the new factor. If you're trying a new technique for like with, with somatics, don't also change some other aspect of your cycle or like your, your practice rather, your daily cycle and like what, you know, what time you do your practice or how much you do or, you know, adding a supplement or medication or something like that at the same time. If we don't isolate the factor, this really is scientific, then we can't know which thing is having what impact. So isolate that factor. So if you're, again, if you're trying something new, trial and error, trial and error, things like rounds, how much of that works for you or somatics or, um, you know, testing a, a new mood elevator or testing a new incremental training thing, like trial and error, everything and apply what you know earnestly. And what, by that, I see a lot of people, I meet a lot of people who are like, oh yeah, I'm doing it, but they're not, they're not actually doing it. They say they're rewiring their brains, but they don't know what the five pillars of DNRS are, even if they took it. They don't understand the basics of neuroscience. And they're not, you know, they, they may have been doing one of that, like I've been doing an hour of rounds a day for a year, but not catching any trauma loops, not elevating the state at all, not even aware of the understanding that the whole point is to see everything as limbic. You're not, you're not going to see any progress. So apply what you know, do it earnestly, give it your best effort check in with yourself instead of being like, oh, I did that and it's not working. Like that that kind of attitude towards this doesn't work. It's not effective. And then follow your intuition as best you can within all of that. If you're doing, if you're trial and erroring things, you're applying what you already know as best and earnestly as you can, and you're following your intuition as best you can, you're doing it. That's it. If you need more information, get more information. Um, don't get lost in the, the sauce of um, just endlessly learning about the process instead of doing it. Applying what you already know will always be more effective than trying to learn something new. Generally speaking, we, it's very easy to get, limbic systems love that. Like, I'll just read about it and then it's like, it's like I'm doing it, but we're not. And the brain doesn't have to change. It just looks sexy, but it doesn't actually lead us where we want to go. So that's the very overexcited lowdown of information for you guys today. I love you all. And I hope that this gave you some clarity and hope. Mwah.